welcome to a new uh, year of Terry Third Thursday programs. I'm Diane Bloodworth. I'm on the Terry College Alumni Board, and I'm also the co-chair uh, for the Terry Third Thursday events. It's great to see everyone out this morning. If this is your first time coming to a Terry Third Thursday, I just wanted to welcome you to the Terry College's Executive Education Center. Um, this is the Terry College's Atlanta home, and also where the Terry College is able to interface with the Terry alumni and the Atlanta business community. I'm part of a committee, uh, the Terry Third Thursday Committee, and we work hard to bring you a, an outstanding speaker, compelling speaker series, and also a worthwhile networking opportunity. And we are backed up by some really great sponsors that I wanted to acknowledge this morning. And our premier corporate sponsor uh, for Terry Third Thursday is the Bank of North Georgia. And do we have some folks here from the Bank of North Georgia this morning? Yes, thank you. Appreciate your sponsorship. Uh, Deloitte is also a corporate sponsor, and we want to offer our thanks to them. They've renewed their sponsorship this year, and we really appreciate that. Um, we're also supported by two media sponsors, Public Broadcasting Atlanta, I believe. Here we go. And the Atlanta Business Chronicle. Yes. Thank you. I wanted to uh, quickly mention a couple of upcoming events. On February 19th, we have Jerry S. Wilson from Coca-Cola. He's going to be here, and he's got a really interesting topic, and it's I think we'll all identify with. It's talking about managing brand you, as in Y-O-U. And he, Jerry is a board-elect senior vice president of the Coca-Cola company, and he serves as the president of Coca-Cola's global McDonald's division. And the, the discussion he'll bring to the room is, what if you thought of yourself as a brand? and he'll provide a roadmap for your own uh, personal exploration. So if you're into this type of uh, self-improvement, we think this will be something you'll really enjoy and t take a lot away from. On March 19th, we have Doug Curling, and Doug is the president and COO of Choice Point, and he will speak, and uh, the title of his speech, and take this in a tongue-in-cheek uh, manner that it's intended, is Yes, Senator, and other phrases you don't learn in business school. And you can register, I know, you don't want to miss that, right? Uh, you can register for these events on the Terry College website, and we also have some alumni relations folks in the room that can give you uh, additional information as well. And I'm going to turn the program over to Carl Swearingen, who's going to introduce our speaker. And I want to just provide a little bit of background on Carl. He has two journalism degrees from UGA, as well as a graduate uh, degree in management from MIT. And he's really one of University of Georgia's most distinguished graduates, having spent his entire career with Bell South, I think going back to the days when it was called Southern Bell. And throughout his career, he's also led some very important uh, groups in the state. He's led the UGA, National Alumni Association, the Georgia Partnership of Excellence in Education, the Georgia Department for Industry, Trade, and Tourism. He chaired Governor Purdue's 2002 transition team and was appointed to the Governor's Commission for a New Georgia in 2003. And I think most recently he's been serving as Chairman of the state's technical college system. Now, Carl, I understand that you're expecting the imminent arrival of a grandchild. So if you see Carl get up and leave in the middle of the program, uh, he's not going to a meeting. He's gotten that phone call. So, Carl. Well, thank you, Diane, and good morning, and I'm proud to announce that that grandchild did arrive at 2.58 on Saturday, and uh, my task, as most of us are given tasks during those time, was to keep hold of a 19-month-old and 140 pounds of boxers. <laughs> the mission was don't destroy two houses, just one if you can do it. But I'm delighted to be here, and when you see the Kia Motors slogan, the power to surprise, I think you'll be surprised with today's speaker. When you look at Randy Jackson, you find the consummate executive, the global marketeer, the individual who's given the task of, Randy, why don't you go down and start a plant? See if you can pick out a spot somewhere along the major corridor. By the way, we need rail and air. We'll need water. We'll need all the assistance you can from the state of Georgia. And with me today are two of the people who've done a marvelous job doing that. I want you to welcome Commissioner Ron Jackson and Assistant Commissioner Jackie Rahoski. They run the Technical College System of Georgia and Quick Start, which is the premier economic development arm for the state of Georgia. And I can tell you every time the governor, <clears throat> be it Purdue, Barnes, or Miller, or whoever, 
meets with a global customer and says, let me tell you, we can probably help with your training. We can help with your planning. We can help with your orientation. We've got this little uh, crowd over here called Quick Start. And I'm sure Randy's going to talk about that. But I want you to welcome these two people. They run a major organization in the state of Georgia, Commissioner Jackson, Assistant Commissioner Rojasky. When you look at technical colleges and then put that with the University System of Georgia, we are in the process of really touching close to 400,000 people every year to ensure our workforce is ready, well-trained, and prepared. Randy Jackson is a Macon, Georgia native. He is a UGA graduate, 1979, with a degree in psychology. Well, that wasn't enough, so he got an MBA in business and cost analysis from Century College, and then he went on and got a JD degree from UCLA. So as he's traveled from the east to the west, he's increased his educational abilities, and then you begin to see the task that he's been given, start up the Kia Motors Manufacturing Center. Well, it wasn't just by accident. Nine months after Governor Perdue and Chairman Chung broke ground ceremoniously on this new plant, that Randy Jackson was chosen to be the Director of Human Resources and the administration. Get it going, Randy. Hire the people. Make sure everything is in order. And he'll tell you about what this video represents. But when you look at an individual who's traveled the globe, literally, Mexico, Japan, Germany, Canada, all across America, and you begin to understand the impact of a Korean global company, a $16 billion company tapping someone with this ability to come in and start up a plant, you see how amazing it is. The cultural understanding that we read about, that we study about to understand and appreciate, uh, this gentleman has it all together. So we are delighted to have someone who has worked with Mercedes, Toyota, and Alcan Aluminum to understand the manufacturing requirements, the need to fulfill customer expectations. We're delighted to have at the Terry Third Thursday this outstanding speaker. Please welcome a great friend and a wonderful colleague for the state of Georgia, Randy Jackson. Thank you, Carl. Um, one of the things you guys don't know is all those moves I've made. I think this will be my 11th move once we finalize a house purchase down in the Troop County areas somewhere. Every one of those travels throughout my career has had a Georgia room that went with me. And I can assure you the one I've got currently in Tuscaloosa is quite large. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it grows everywhere we go and, and people have a tendency to give me Georgia things. And I'm very proud of being a graduate there. And regardless of how many other schools I've attended, I always consider myself a dog and never will change that. Just this past Christmas, my son uh, I opened up a Christmas present and he had me a, an autographed football from Herschel Walker with a photograph whereby he was signing that. So it seems to go with you and, and as all of you know, when you graduate there, there's something in the, in the air and the blood and, and the graduating of it. So I'm very proud to be a, a University of Georgia graduate and also very proud to be addressing you today. I have been fortunate in my career to um, spend a lot of time with some premier companies and I'm hoping and uh, having come back in about 25 years and landing back into Georgia I can take all those experiences and apply it to Kia. It's a great company. We're growing rapidly. Uh, as, as you know we're the fastest growing automotive company in the world. And a lot of people ask me that question. Uh, Randy, why would you leave Toyota? Why would you leave a Mercedes-Benz and join a Kia? And um, the answer is very easily uh, said that why wouldn't you want to join Kia? And uh, as their senior American leader, um, I'm very committed to making this project um, successful for the state of Georgia as well as the company and uh, as well as North America. So thank you for having me. What I want to do is talk a little bit about Kia on a global perspective first, and then I'll narrow it down to what we're doing in North America, and then I'll also talk about the site. And um, Quick Start was mentioned earlier, and I can assure you, I've told Ron and Jackie this many times, I've, I've dealt with a lot of states, and I've dealt with a lot of workforce development, and I've dealt with a lot of um, agencies that claim to be partnerships with companies, but the Quick Start organization is so far ahead of other states and what they do, it's not even comparable. And the things that they've done for us and the things that they can do for other companies 
is definitely uh, on the forefront. So I appreciate everything you guys have done for us, and uh, we will continue to grow together. A little bit about Kia, and I normally don't speak from slides, so it's a little awkward for me. I usually just speak and talk about the experiences, but I'm going to show some things to you today that I think um, you'll like because we're going to get into some photographs that we have not shown before on what's happening in, uh, in Georgia, particularly around the workforce. But, but Kia is a global organization, very large company. Um, we are into many things other than automobiles. And um, one of the things we have is Kia Motors underneath the Hyundai Kia umbrella as well as uh, uh, other automotive companies. A lot of people ask, well, how is Kia and Hyundai related? Uh, we're very easily, pretty much you could put it in perspective as a brother-sister uh, underneath that umbrella reporting to the same parent. But you can see we've got 179 distributors worldwide, 3,300 dealers around the world, 155 countries, and we have 32,000 employees. Just uh, recently, last week, we had our, our uh, President Chung was in, and we had a tour of the site. We also had the President of Brazil with us, and um, he was traveling around with us looking at what we're doing. We've got some Canadian dealers coming in next week looking, and uh, we have people from all over the globe coming in to see what we're doing because we have been given the challenge to make this the best manufacturing facility in the company, and that is a very strong target. A little bit about what's happening with the brand around the world. We're, we're getting continuously uh, major awards. Um, the, Ron, the Rondo, uh, Sedona, the Best Buy vehicles, we're getting safety crash course ratings. J.D. Power's climbing, getting better. Uh, our quality with 100,000 miles and 10 years of warranty, you better sure when you come off the line it's good quality. If not, warranty costs can eat you alive. And, um, you know, a lot of people ask me, well, how is Kia doing this? How, how do they continue to hit these type of awards every year and we've got growth at 14 years in a row and and a 15th right behind us and uh, how do you continue to stay in the in the black and the red and um, you know we do have a, a, a good formula it's very simply put we want good quality we want good cost and we want to manage our people with dignity and respect now you can go on and on and on and talk about that but you have to have good quality for customers to buy. You have to have good appeal. You have to have good pricing, those kinds of things. But cost reduction is where all that comes from. And um, I was telling someone earlier, uh, I hope to spend a little bit of time with you on the Kia way before I close because I think it's important to apply to any business. And hopefully some of our philosophies you can take back to your companies. The decision to come to Georgia <coughs> was made in 2005 to locate the site in Troop County, the city of West Point, which is between here and Montgomery. The governor was there with, with President Chung, and uh, we signed the deal, a $1 billion investment. And um, there's been other costs that come to us that's hidden, but I can assure you that number is far beyond that. And then we had the groundbreaking um, with the governor there, so a lot of excitement, and um, people were uh, very excited in that region because that region has been hit very hard with job loss and textile. I may have need some help here. Somebody with this. I'm not sure what's happening. I uh, actually lost control. Yeah. Somebody's getting it back. Okay. Um, do I need to mess with this? have someone. Anyway, um, we had the groundbreaking and then uh, I wanted to show you this training center that was, there it is, this training center that was developed by um, the state of Georgia. And this is really what Quick Start's running for us is this training center. A little over $20 million. And, you know, when I left Mercedes, the, the uh, training center there and the previous training center at Toyota was great. And I have to give Jackie and Ron a lot of credit first thing they did is go out and benchmark other training centers to see what the automobile industry was delivering. They did that. They went to Hyundai. They went around, went to Korea, looked at these things. They came back and said, let's put a model together. 
a benchmark, and they've delivered this, and it's amazing. It's two floors. It's I um, mean, when you walk in, it gives you a tremendous first impression. This is where we are training our people right now, other than in Korea. They um, go through the pre-hire. I'll get into that on, on our hiring selections. And uh, then they come back in for post-hire. The other thing that, um, that happened with Quick Start, and I have to give them the credit, um, having been in the industry a long time, there was a lot of discussion around going to automated and, and online application process. When I left Mercedes, we had done about a 50-50 of that and was, was pretty successful on one side, but we're still doing a lot of manual work. And uh, what's difficult is when you, you know from experience you're going to get thousands and thousands of applications. So the process is if you're in a manual system, you've got to wade through paper. You've got humans looking at paper. They get overloaded and they start skipping processes and they start making quick decisions. And then in the end run, you make a bad decision on a hire. We wanted to go with a 100% online process and uh, went to Quick Start and asked them to deliver this for us, and they did. And I remember um, getting out and talking to communities and doing press releases around this, and it scared people really when they first started looking at it, but we were successful in launching a 100% online process for applications, all computer-driven. The communities um, came to the table with uh, many computers that they were putting in libraries and churches and uh, Michael Thurman's group opened up additional DOL centers to help and throughout the region um, we launched that and closed it down in 30 days. Now the normal benchmark time frame in industry is about 60 days and some people had moved it to 45 days. Honda previously did that and we wanted to set a new benchmark at 30 days was able to do that and uh, the number that came in was actually 43,013 applications in 30 days. And I can assure you that is a lot of people signing up to work for Kia. And uh, Quick Start was able to capture those, download them, databases were put in and we were able to start tracking what was happening and as you can see once um, you have a system where you can slice it and dice it. It's almost like looking at buckets or pictures of data. And we were able to look at, well, what is it telling us? 97% of the applicants were high school graduates, which is something we wanted to know. 30% uh, completed two or four years of college. And you know this stuff very quickly. Now think about how you would try to get that information if you were going through manual with these kinds of papers. I mean, you probably put them all in this room and they're all stacked in boxes. Um, 30% of them had four years of college, 74% had three years of work experience. We knew 70% of the applicants came from Georgia, and we knew 20% was coming from the neighboring state of Alabama, which is right there in that corner of Linnaet, Opelika, Auburn uh, Valley area. And we had 10% across the country. Now keeping in mind this was internet based, we did get one application from Hawaii. So anyone in the United States could go in there and apply for these jobs. But what we saw was this result, which was more regional based, um, Atlanta based, Columbus based. The state uh, came to the table very strong with that delivery. And um, I am proud to say that at, we had a target at the end of this year, 08 actually, that every one of those 43,013 applications have been at least looked at and reviewed for accuracy. So even though we took everything automated on the computer, we went through and made sure uh, our recruiting staff that people had filled the application outright, did they leave anything off, or did they forget to answer a question so that we could follow back up. What we're doing now is pulling buckets of people as we hire. Now, this is a picture we have never we have not shown before and one of the reasons we don't give a lot of tours in the training centers because this is kind of what you'll see. What we basically do is we pull people for pre-hire. They have to go through 40 hours of training before they can move to 
a uh, preliminary job offer. Then they have to go through what we call the second phase is um, drug testing, physicals, and then they have to go through a POET, which is an ergonomically uh, testing on how well they can handle the jobs physically. But during this 40 hours, people, will, for the most part, are still working at their previous job. We opened it up where they could come in on day shift, evening shift, or Saturdays. And they actually go through this process where they actually do the work. It's a simulated work set up at the training center where they can get a taste of what automotive's all about. People ask, well, why do you do that? Well, long term, we want to be sure that it's a long term marriage. If they join us, we want to make a good selection. We have people experience this and say, I really like this. We have some people say, this is not what I thought. And sometimes they'll walk away, which is good. They haven't made a mistake. And we got all in between. But it gives them a, a, an example of what the work's like. This is, again, some uh, assimilated work. You can see a guy here working on a rim. You can see people going through processes. The other thing they have to do is they have to follow standardized work. And that's not so easy to do. And I don't know how your businesses are run, but our businesses have to be standardized because we have to have every team member doing the same process, the same way, all the time, every day, every minute. First shift, second shift, nights, weekends, it doesn't matter. And if you don't, it will become a quality problem. And if you have 100,000 miles, 10 years of warranty, and you want repeat buyers, you better sure have good quality. So it's a self-discipline that has to be learned. And as, I, and as you know, our human behaviors sometimes are not so, not so easy to have self-discipline in place. You can see more team members here working on uh, machines. We have robotics there. We have pneumatics. Um, we have just recently opened uh, a new paint shop, which gives people an opportunity to go in and actually experience the painting of vehicles. Here's some welding exercises going on. Um, as these team members are going through this, we have quick start monitoring and we have Kia monitoring, watching uh, attention to detail, the safety of the job, hand-eye coordinations, learning, reading standardized work, following standardized work, and then they're graded with a scorecard at the end. And then they either move on to the next process or not. Maintenance team members is the same way. We have PLCs, the finest equipment you can put in there, the most uh, technology driven that one can buy today. And they're continuing to learn through this process as well. The, um, this is pretty much what's happened with the workforce so far. 4,000, a little over 4,000 interviews have been completed. These are face-to-face -face interviews where people are called by our call center to come in for an interview. Normally you have two people interviewing one person, and there's all kinds of standardized questions that are being asked, and then they're determined, do I go to the next step or not? We've had a little over 1,500 pre-hire assessments completed. A little over 58,000 hours in pre-hire training, which is some of the slides you just saw. And um, once they get the final offer, then they join the Kia payroll. And normally they're on a plane fairly quickly after that on their way to Korea for training there. And then when they finish that training, which is normally three to four weeks assignment, they'll come back and go back into the training center, and we have over 82,000 post-hire training hours already in. Now think about the investment because I go back and I talk about this one billion. Think about how that number is growing. It, it's adding every day as we go forward. Um, and the biggest challenge we'll have is training our workforce. And we can buy land, we can buy machines, we can buy materials but we have to develop a workforce. And I can assure you we have the best partner to help us do that. And the results that we're seeing are fantastic. And we think and we hope that we're going to have the best workforce in place to launch this vehicle. Once the construction was finished, 
we had to start looking at equipment. The equipment is made in Korea, and part of the reasons these team members go to Korea in their, in their training is they're working on the equipment in what we call P1 trials, because the P1 trials are being run in Korea. So they're going over and they're working with trainers in Korea on the equipment that we're going to have here in Georgia. That equipment was made and it's up and running and it's getting fine-tuned in what we call P1. Um, P2 <coughs> trials will take place in Georgia and that equipment, once it's run on P1, it'll be taken down and shipped to Georgia to be installed along with many other pieces of equipment. And then when the team members get into P2 trials, it won't be the first time they've seen the equipment because the first time they saw it and trained on it was in Korea. How do we get that equipment here? We had to manufacture it, make it, put it on a ship and get it to the Savannah port and it had to be unloaded and here's some photographs here of the equipment coming off the ships in Savannah and we had to bring it to Georgia to be installed. We had a, a groundbreaking ceremony with the governor recently around that and some of these equipments are extremely large. The trucks that we had to bring this equipment in on had 29 axles. It took up four lanes of the interstate because it's kind of like a snake. The two, the two front tires are on the right lane and it comes and curves and the two back tires are on the left lane so it runs like this. It can only go five miles an hour it can only travel from 10 o'clock at night to, f to uh, uh, 4 in the morning. It has to turn o uh, come over and park because of DOT regulations. It took um, many, many days uh, to get each truck from Savannah to LaGrange. It had to go from Savannah to Macon to Griffin and some up to Atlanta and down. But um, you can imagine if you're probably on your way on vacation and you get behind one of these trucks, <laughs> I can assure you are, uh, you're frustrated until you know it's Kia and then everybody's excited again. <laughs> so uh, literally we haven't had too much problem but, but successful in getting it here. And um, again, quick start along with um, our PR group went down and, and actually physically was there watching this stuff being unloaded and photographed and we have films and that will all go into our libraries. <coughs> And um, someone asked me, I think before we started, well, how was your Christmas break? And I said, I don't know. We ran straight through Christmas. We had 50 trucks a day coming in, delivery, and we had just continued to go. So we're at full steam, two shifts. Um, we did take a little bit of a break for Christmas Day and New Year's Day, but otherwise we were hard at it and have been since the groundbreaking. And that's why when people drive by, 85 interstate and look at um, this, the progress we've made. Here's some other, here's this truck over here. Um, they wonder how fast and how successful is this coming together. Well, if you throw two shifts at it constantly, you're, you're definitely moving pretty fast. Here's some of the equipment that's come in, the trucks of delivery. And here's the site from an aerial view. Um, if you were looking at it from northbound to southbound, the I-85 interstate goes by it. And I can assure you, if you haven't seen it, I would encourage you to go by it and look at it. It definitely gives you the wow effect. It takes 5.2 miles to get by it from beginning to end. We um, recently opened up December 10. The state opened up Kia Boulevard and Kia Parkway. And um, it's very nice and you can see all the inner roads coming in. The railroad just finished their um, piece. Uh, we just met with them uh, this week and they came in ahead of schedule. We had a main line on the back side but they had to put the tail spurs in and they finished that. Had to put a bridge in across Long Cane Creek and then there was another bridge that had to be put in on Kia Parkway. All that's been finished and now the landscaping is starting to take place. We hope that in the future when you come by you can uh, be proud of what you drive by. And um, the water tower, which is a million gallon water tower, is up, owned by the city of West Point. We have the big Kia logo up there. It's very hard to miss, but it is a very proud site to have here. And 
I know everybody that comes down from the state of Georgia, we've had many, many people there from the governor's office, including himself. Sometimes they drive in, sometimes they helicopter in, but we're very proud to have them. We've had people in from Washington. We've had people in from other countries, and um, it's a very high-profile project and we're very proud to deliver it to you. Um, I'm going to kind of divert from this a minute and talk to you a little bit more about some other things that I think is important that we're doing. Um, not only is, you know, and, and I've been in this a while, when you land an OEM in a state, particularly in a, an area like West Point, Georgia, that has suffered from job loss and plant closures, you're really changing lives. And I think that's important because we hope that we can leave there one day, those of us who have been part of this, and walk away saying we made a difference. Um, we made a difference with people in their work. We made a difference in, in their income buying powers. We made a difference in the, the view of the cities that you drive through. And um, we've made a difference in the state. Hopefully we can bring other businesses here. Um, we are uh, in a position where we have developers coming in, we have new hotels coming in, we have restaurants coming in, we have new uh, residential home developments coming in, and most all these are brand new. And all the people in the region will be able to uh, experience that as well as the state. The air traffic coming into Atlanta is going to get heavier. Once they land, they're going to drive south and they're going to want to visit a lot of people in our purchasing departments. Um, as we get up and running, we'll have public tours. I would encourage you to stop by and take a tour, see what making cars is all about. And um, we want people in the state of Georgia to start driving Kias. I hope I start seeing more nameplates out there. I can assure you that if you get into our line, you'll like it. Um, I'm not telling you you have to go buy a Kia, but I'm, I'm saying that if you're in the market for a new vehicle or if you want to trade, be sure to look at our line. I was in Las Vegas in November at the National Dealer Convention, and we had about two hours and 20 minutes talking about what's going to happen in the 09 year. Each one of us had a discussion with many thousands of people and uh, very high profile, but we do have a new line coming out, the Borrego, which came out in August if you haven't seen it, is, um, will soon be our oldest vehicle in the lineup, which is hard to believe because it just came out in August. But we do have a lot of new vehicles coming out. We will launch at uh, Georgia the new next generation Sorento, and then we will have the Soul coming out, which should be at the dealerships now for test driving, and it will be purchasable in April. It will come out in Europe in February. And I literally drove that vehicle when I was in Korea last, and it is a very nice car. We have other vehicles coming out behind it, and I think in 12 to 18 months, you're going to look out there and say, wow, Kia's got a lot of new <coughs> exposure on the road. And that is our strategy. We want to be at the right place at the right time. A lot of people ask me um, what, what's going on today about you, the industry, the company. And what we've basically said is we're taking it each day at a time, each week at a time, and um, we're keeping our eye on the market. A lot of people in this industry are suffering. Um, we feel the market will turn around. We don't know when, but we're still staying on schedule. we are um, got our sights set on the SOP launch. It should be December, early December of 2009. Thanksgiving holidays is in there, and we've got to determine do we go before or after. We'll go into trials in March, late March. Um, we've got everybody moving to the site in late March. Um, this is all the administration groups, the management groups. Uh, currently, we have people at um, the site in trailers. We have two floors at the West Georgia Technical Building. We have people full at the training <laughs> center. It's very difficult to get a parking space there now. So in late March, we hope to pull everybody together in our corporate office and get everybody on the same page. Um, a lot of excitement in the area, a lot of excitement in the state. And I remember when I was with Toyota, um, 
Georgia was on the list several times for site selection and uh, for whatever reason came off the list. So I know Georgia has been looking for an OEM for a long time and I'm very proud that um, Kia has made the selection to choose Georgia to build their facility and I think many years to come you will uh, see the growth of that facility. The site here that you look at and it's interesting because if you look at just the graded part that you can see in the picture it's, six, it's about 650 acres but it sits on 2200 acres of land and one of the questions I get quite often is they'll say Randy why, why you got so much property out there you got 2200 acres of land what are you gonna do with all that land well to me it, it's pretty simple it's basically what can you do with it other than grow and get bigger why did you buy so much property well we hope to be bigger than we are and I think if we continue the performance that we have and with our new lineup and um, we're successful in getting the customer in our vehicles and proud to drive our vehicles and we continue with our philosophies of cost improvement continuous improvement and treating our workforce with dignity and respect and continue to develop that workforce we will have growth what does growth mean it means a lot more positive things for the region as well as the state and um, I know Georgetown up in uh, Kentucky with Toyota is just coming on there 30 years and it seems like it was just birthed not too long ago and it's now 30 years old so usually when they land they're here for a long 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 time I haven't spoke too much about the supplier side but I think it's important to recognize that we do have several suppliers that are on the pad with us this is out here with us we have Mobus we have Globus and we have Powertech now which is Powertech's a transmission plant Mobus is more chassis driven uh, and uh, Globus is more parts distribution uh, component part flow but what we wanted to do is those of us who have been in this industry a long time we wanted to really improve upon what we were doing here and we are kind of putting some infrastructure in out there so that our flow of materials is really reducing our freight cost and we're just in time more and we think that this is going to be a very key model for the North American challenge of the industry and um, it's cutting edge technology is the best you can put in there and our flow is um, going to be fantastic um, if you drive by you can see the uh, the overhead connections of the buildings and a lot of people will ask me when they see it they don't really understand what it is and they'll say was well, that where the people are going to walk from building to building and I said no those are those are cars going between those buildings and parks going between those buildings on conveyor systems so that we don't have to put them on a truck load them on a truck unload them and take them to the lines it's all generated through our process development and I can assure you when you get into those types of systems you're dropping your cost and what does that mean that means we can be more aggressive in the market we can be more aggressive in pricing when we go to market with our vehicles and normally when you're not handling things from a human standpoint your lack of mistakes is lower as well I'm gonna close and open it up for questions I hope that you've gotten to know Kia a little better I could sit here and talk to you for several more hours and that's why I hope that you'll ask me some questions because you may have something out there I haven't addressed uh, and I'll try to answer those I do appreciate you having me and um, we do have a philosophy philosophy of how we manage this company and it's called the Kia way and it's basically bringing two cultures together we have an American culture and a Korean culture and we basically search for the best of the best in anything we do and the best could be from the two countries it could be from your experiences because our senior leadership brings a lot of international experience to the table I personally bring a lot from the American side and the Korean side also brings it so when we sit down at the table normally what we start with is lessons learned what worked what worked well how can we make it work better what didn't work in our careers let's don't do it again and if we do it let's change it and I can tell you that we're a, we're a group that's never satisfied 
The status quo is a kiss of death. We try to make things better every day than we did yesterday. And that's our motto. It's built on trust. It's built on building relationships. And people are the heart and soul of our company. And without people and the development of those people, we will not be successful. How do we do that? We have to train managers to manage people appropriately. We can teach technical skills. You have to have people skills, and you have to continue to develop those skills. And we're currently working with Quick Start now and moving into that area of development. And we hope that when people come to work for Kia, they will get up in the morning and say, I want to go to work because I love working there. Not that they go to work because they have a job or that they have to go to work. And there's a difference. The difference is one's a paycheck and one's in the heart. And we try to get into your heart, your soul, your mind, and your body as a total system and make it where it's proud of working for us as well as making our product. And I would encourage you to take some of that back to your facilities. If you don't, think about how you manage your people. If you get into their heart, their mind, their soul, their body, you can get 100% plus. If you're just getting into them because they're there, you're probably getting about half of them. I'll open it up for questions. Yes, sir. Question about green technology uh, and hybrid. Can we make sure we have the mic, a signal for the mic for any questions? Because we're doing uh, putting this on the Terry webcast, and we want to make sure we capture your question. My question regards the... Uh, Green technology and the hybrid, I know it entered into our decision to buy cars. We've bought two cars. They're not American-made. And uh, I wondered if um, you could comment on what your approach is to either electrical or hybrid or some other diesel uh, technology that's coming down the line. All of the above is a priority for us, and we're already into the technologies of that. The R&D Center is studying that, and we are... Uh, pleased with where we're at in current condition versus future position. Thank you. I congratulate you on what you're doing, but as I listened to you, I could not help but think about General Motors and Chrysler asking the U.S. government for money in order to stay alive. What is it that they're not doing that, that you're doing, or do you care to comment on that? <laughs> Actually, a, a news reporter asked me that question uh, this week, and, and to be honest with you, um, you know, I've never worked for those companies, and I really don't fully understand enough about them to comment. Um, I'm not in Detroit, but I do know they're struggling. Um, I hope that they're able to turn it and succeed, but I don't know enough about the condition to really give you an answer other than uh, hopefully they'll get it together and move on. Hey, good morning. Thank you for coming out. I'm curious what I'm over here. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for coming Let's out this morning. Here. Uh, just curious what you guys are doing to grapple with the cost of health care now and over the next 24 months. One of the things that I did day one um, was I took an approach. Uh, we actually have our medical with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia. Um, and we took our entire site, all of our suppliers, and you know anyone that's connected to actually our sales and marketing dealers, our entire process, and um, because everybody had different things, and um, from experiences and lessons learned, um, I said we're going to take a complete circle with this, and we're going to talk about everybody. And we went to uh, set, we sat down and did the negotiations, and we basically said everybody will have everything, and everyone will participate with one company. And um, it helped tremendously in pricing. It helps tremendously in volume for the delivery of that product. The communications flow becomes standardized. So we've, we've done quite well in that area because of that approach um, versus letting everybody go do their own thing. And cost is rising. So it was a very uh, top-down, centralized, driven decision. We continue to monitor that. Um, what we basically do is educate 
we'll be heavily involved in wellness programs. We'll have our own medical department, doctors, nurses, uh, fitnesses, and things like that. So, you know, personally, I believe um, you have to work at it yourself as far as wellness and nutritions and things like that, and we'll get into nutrition in our, uh, in our on-site uh, on restaurants, um, trying to get people to eat right, exercise, you know, things like that. Good morning. Question, two questions. First, um, what are you doing to forecast demand for your product in such a way that you don't have a buildup of inventory and you actually have to have a work stoppage? I know that's several, uh, that may be several months away, but that's the first question. The second question is how are you hedging uh, the cost of uh, the, the cost of raw materials in, in your process? Well, th there's two types of systems and of course, Detroit runs more of what I call the old Henry Ford system, which is a push system. Basically, you um, you build to inventory or manufactured inventory, then you sell from inventory. Um, more of the newer transplants, which would be Nissan's, Hondas, Toyotas, Kias, etc., were on what we call pull systems, which is build to order. And I think there's a tremendous difference: cost reduction, inventory control, parts control, and um, the successful systems have been pull systems. So we are definitely down that road. It's leaner, it's faster, uh, more cost efficient, uh, less, uh, less struggles and much more flexible. Committees for uh, Georgia manufacturers to uh, move into Kia as suppliers for your plant? We do have, uh, I can't really comment so much on Georgia suppliers. Um, I know we have a lot of U.S. suppliers, um, which are automotive based. And we also have our Korean suppliers that are locating here and building plants. And most <coughs> of them have either built in Georgia. Uh, some are on the pad, some are close to us, or either right on the outskirts of Georgia on the Alabama line. Uh, some of those are supplying us and Hyundai, and they're looking at distances between us and Montgomery. Um, I think that uh, what will happen in future years from experiences, um, you will have more and more people wanting to come to Georgia that are connected to automotive, uh, either tier, tier two, tier three type systems of suppliers. That's why I think it's important to take the state, take Quick Start, take anything that you can sell that is um, marketable to attract people to Georgia because you're going to have other states that are in this region that are going to be doing the same thing. You've got Volkswagen going into uh, Chattanooga, so it's right there at the North Georgia line. Um, so you need to really go after the marketing piece of this. And I know Jackie and Ronaba talked about this a lot. The one thing that, um, that OEMs look for when they come looking for site selection, obviously they want land and they want to be able to have enough to build. But the most important thing they're looking for is workforce. Is the workforce available? Is it, is it trainable? Is it developable? It, you know, is the workforce there? Because that's the most challenging. And um, when you have uh, someone like Quick Start that can come in and sell that to um, potential businesses and companies, it's, it's very valuable. Randy, you showed us how you selected the line workers um, through testing, but how do you select the first and second level managers that require both technical skills and leadership skills? The first thing we've done, and, and I'll kind of walk through this because we're already now about ready to take another step forward, but the first thing we wanted to do uh, was get automotive experience in the door. And we have uh, aggressively went after that. We've hired people from Toyota, from Honda, from Nissan, from uh, GM, Ford, Chrysler, uh, Mercedes-Benz. And a lot of us, to be honest with you, know people in this industry and we know talents. Um, because we're going to have a large number of people that's never worked in automotive before. It's going to have to be taught. Um, then we'll move into what I call more regional-based hiring, which is people that would be in the management ranks that, that have good management skills, but they've got to learn automotive. 
And um, we do have a process. We have, um, of course, when you get into the interview, you go through all kinds of behavioral interviewing. You go through behavioral testing. And um, you come in and you usually interview with about five or six people at a time. So uh, you got five or six people across from one interviewing. There's um, a consensus analysis that's put together to determine is this a job fit or not. And then we invite those people back in with their spouses to kind of look around at the area. And um, then we start uh, the job offers from there. They have to go through, you know, physicals and drug testing and things like that. But the one thing that we look at, and we've had, we've had people that have come in that are extremely technically sound. If they don't have good people skills, they probably aren't going to go very far. We want people that's going to treat people with dignity and respect. We want people that's going to be able to communicate. We want people that will learn. And we want people that I call have good soft skills, which is good leaders, good communicators, good problem solvers. And we want good teachers and we want good coaches. And then we will fill the gaps of the training that's needed on the technical side. Um, I say this many, many times. You can get someone with heavy technical skills, but you cannot manage and change behavior with a wrench. It's impossible. You have to manage people differently. You have to get to know people and you have to get into their into their hearts to understand how they need to be motivated. And I didn't talk about this, but it's true. We currently today have four generations working in this country at one time. We have the baby boomers, we have, um, I'm not sure what they call them, the X's and the Y's, and I'm not sure what the new ones are, but you, you do have four buckets. And I can tell you that that's our workforce. I mean, that's what we deal with every day. Now, on top of that, we have two generations of Koreans. We have their equivalency baby boomers, and then we have their equivalency of the XY, which are different. So in Kia, we have six buckets. Now, if you're a manager, or a supervisor, and I can tell you, you don't manage them the same way because their interest levels are different, their motivational levels are different. What makes them work hard or not work hard, come to work or not come to work is hard. So what that means is you as a manager or a leader have to be flexible and you have to be able to hit each bucket and make sure as a total team they're working together and that's a challenge. I can also tell you that this email system is a challenge because our culture is more face-to-face, -face, get to know people, relationship building, trust building, and then we have the language issues that we're trying to, you know, make sure that Korean language and English language that we're on the same page before we go somewhere. And, and as an attorney, just the American language, I can sit up here and twist words all day long and we get confused among our own language because we have so many multiple meanings of words. And you get on an email and boom, 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 and someone sends it to you 99% of the time. You don't read it the way they sent it. And now you've got communications issues, conflict, relationship damages, political issues, and we understand how, what's the problem here? And, and you're trying to put in team-focused systems. Um, sometimes technology in this area is maybe not on our side but you still have to deal with it. And um, you have to be able to really, really have good people skills. Yes, sir. Um, the Japanese auto manufacturers have targeted the premium market by creating alternative brands like Acura and Lexus and, and things like that. Um, Hyundai, however, just released the Genesis to hit the premium market. In Car the, of the year. And didn't, yeah, exactly. Uh, 400 horses for a Korean car is pretty surprising to me with a nice sound system and things like that with a reasonable price too. Um, does Kia plan to target that market? And if so, do you think that they'll take the Japanese route of creating a separate brand for that market or try and leverage the Kia name? Well, you know, we're part of the Hyundai Kia company, so we know kind of what they're doing. We, they know what we're doing, and um, we, we think that's the direction we want to stay right now. What we're coming out with in this new models is more what I call sporty models. Uh, they're, they're traveling down more of a, 
a normal luxurious type market and I think those can come together quite nicely. Um, but we want to be sure that we respect each other but not hurt each other as well. So um, I think that's what you'll see more. And I think that you have all audiences out there. So, you know, you really have to hit each particular need of the buyer. Randy, uh, from your work experience with uh, Mercedes, I guess that was in Tuscaloosa, um, and uh, drawing from that, what do you anticipate the total number of jobs to be created from the opening of a Kia plant? Well, we've announced 2,500 direct jobs at full production. That'd be 300,000 units, and we could go well beyond that as far as volume. Um, we've got about 7,500 already that's been announced at the supplier base side, um, direct jobs. So if you look at the two totals just in direct, you're over 10,000. Um, then you got other tier twos behind it. The economic impact factor of that is usually three to four times. So you're talking 30,000 plus jobs that could be generated in the state or regions around us that is um, because of us coming. You know, you got restaurant jobs, hotel jobs, construction jobs, development jobs, you know, people having to add uh, current uh, to their current employment because of just more people coming in. And over what period of time do you anticipate those uh, the 10,000 jobs? When we launch at SOP, we should be somewhere around 1,200. That's one shift. And then the second shift would be about one year later from that date and it, it would bring the second half in. Basically, the manpower is driven from volume. If you look at volume to produce and you walk yourself backwards, you go volume, how many processes does it take, at what tack times to produce that vehicle. And then that process and tack time is fed by manpower. So everything's very volume generated. More volume, more, more people, more processes lower volume, less people, less processes. That's why it's important for us to have a good line, have purchasable customers as well as repeat customers because it just brings more volume in. Um, okay, in regards, it was interesting that you said um, you have a lot of different work buckets. And so in regards to your marketing and brand strategy, I'm wondering where you stand um, in regards to your online and digital strategy, if online applications were so new to you guys in the industry, and are you still using traditional media outlets to deliver the Kia brand message? Like, all I think of when I think of cars is the big car dealership commercials with somebody screaming at me showing off their, their twin grandkids, you know, or something like that. And then I'm wondering what type of car you drive. I'm currently, I'm currently driving a Borrego, uh, the new one that came out in August, which is our, I kind of say it's more of a medium-sized SUV. I'm um, doing quite well. Um, we have Kia.com, which takes you into certain web-based systems. We have key, uh, KMMGUSA.com, which is our particular uh, manufacturing web-based. Those are also interlinked. We have KiaJobsInGeorgia.com, which is more uh, application-driven. That's where we got the applications. It also feeds into all those. We have internet purchasing webs where you can buy on the web, design on the web, colors, designs. It's all going down that road. And, of course, we have dealerships like everyone else and commercials like everyone else. Um, we're also working with our dealers now so that you can come into the dealership and start looking at designing of vehicles and pricing on the web. I think the web's here. It's here to stay. We're utilizing it like everyone else. And I know we've received a lot of awards on our websites. I'll let you control the time because I'm not sure. One more, one more question. Sure. One question, two hands. <laughs> the banker in me says that you're spending a lot of money. How are you financing all this? tightening our belt awful tight right now. Uh, well, when you launch a project like this and you go back to the 05 selection year and then you go back to years prior to that before a decision was made, you know, it's like anything else, you have to set aside dollars for that. 
and we were uh, able to, you know, put money aside, and and then you draw it down as you go forward. Um, and we, we we feel very comfortable with that because we have a commitment. Um, we have you know state funding that was committed. We have um, you know contracts with vendors that are committed, and um, we're staying on schedule with that. But you know we're no different than anybody else right now. And we we met on this yesterday. We are watching numbers. We are watching cost. I mean, if we, unless we absolutely have to spend it today, we're pushing it. You know, can we wait next month? Can we wait the following month? Because everyone's watching this economy and watching and seeing what it's doing. But at the same time, we have a date of launch that's not going to move. It's going to hit us. So we're, we're trying to, um, to watch the spending, but at the same time, we have a launch date to hit. Because that launch date has to be to market at a certain time. Thank you very much. Randy for being our speaker this morning and also thank Kia for making a difference in Georgia. We really do appreciate it. And we have uh, a small, oh, it's a heavy token of our appreciation. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is an art sculpture by a local Athens artist, Paul Manuzas, and I wanted to provide this to you and thank you. Thank you. So go nice in my Georgia room. Yeah. <laughs> thank you.